Hello and welcome. You're with us here on Business Today. I'm Ava Bakaya. Let's take a look at the top business stories. Business Today is on location at Davos. Uh, get your daily fix of the latest from the World Economic Forum this entire week. Exclusive interviews with the most influential policymakers, top thought and corporate leaders on India Today TV. Two days after a centre reduces excise on fuel, Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri lobs the ball in state courts, says the states now need to reduce VAT to relieve the pressure on the common man. Tells Business Today TV that OMCs are not Sarkari companies, but responsible corporate citizens. Prime Minister Narendra Modi meets over 30 top Japanese CEOs on the first day of his Tokyo visit, has one-to-one -one interactions with the leadership of Suzuki, SoftBank, Uniqlo and NEC Corporation. Tomorrow he attends the Quad Summit. Markets wipe off all gains, Sensex, Nifty end marginally lower amid volatility, auto stocks rally while metals pack bleeds as government imposes export duties. DRDO Lab submits the much-awaited report on e-scooters bursting into flames. Sources say poor quality batteries to blame for the incident. Government summons and seeks explanation from EV manufacturers. Let's start with the big exclusive from Davos. Two days after centre reduces excise on fuel, Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri lobs the ball in state courts. In an exclusive conversation with Business Today's managing editor, Puri says the states now need to reduce VAT to relieve the pressure on the common man. It's, uh, it's perhaps a coincidence that we didn't know that we would be chatting to you just 24 hours after a significant cut in additional excise duty by the government and the consequent reduction in uh, oil uh, prices, petroleum and diesel. Your first thoughts as to uh, the reason it happened now and what it really means uh, from a price perspective? First of all, it's not a standalone uh, decision. I want to remember you that on November 4, the first petrol and diesel excise cut took place. You remember 5 rupees and 10 rupees petrol and diesel excise was cut. Uh, it was a decision taken by the government, by the Prime Minister in particular, who has been personally monitoring the very difficult terrain through which we are having to navigate. Despite the financial costs involved, the Prime Minister decided, and that is the decision you are referring to yesterday, uh, to re uh, reduce the excise on both petrol and diesel. What would you say, sir? Is should be our policy towards this. Can, it's future a, it's a, future a, it's a private, these are private entities. I am in no position to tell them that you have to stop uh, this thing. You know, they are, they are watching the situation. Now, after all, it's in their interest also that the markets remain stable because ultimately for a while they may not be able to pass on their um, do the full recovery because they're making money on refining margins or petrochemical but some of these are fortune 500 companies and they're highly respectable so they are in a situation where they will watch the situation and as responsible citizens there may come a time where they may suddenly start i don't know but today we are in the situation where the government is assuming its responsibility for excise cut i'm hoping the state governments will reduce their ad valorem VAT and all the other players will play so that there is energy security, uh, availability of energy and affordability. My final question, as a former member uh, and, and a stellar one at that of the Indian Foreign Service representing India along with other uh, cabinet colleagues at the world's largest gathering of the business elite uh, and the political elite, what's the message that you are hearing from people about India having navigated uh, the pandemic, having done pretty decently well to manage... AK, the... AK, it's not the message what I'm hearing here. Mm -hmm. Today, thanks to media organizations like yourselves, thanks to the fact that we are integrated, that news travels through different channels and mediums with breakneck speed, India is a good story. India is a good story for three, four major reasons that it was able to face the challenges of a very basic existential nature during the pandemic. 
हमारा हेल्थ केयर सेक्टर वॉज इन निग्लेक्ट दो हजार हमारी सरकार बनने से पहले जो हमारी पब्लिक सेक्टर में वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कैपेसिटी थी पब्लिक सेक्टर उसको हमने बंद करवा दिया तो कहीं कोई जरूरत नहीं वी वर नॉट ओनली एबल टू मैन्युफैक्चर अ डोमेस्टिक वैक्सीन वन ऑफ आर कंपनीज व्हिच इज यूजिंग रिसर्च डन एट ऑक्सफर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी एंड यू नो पेटेंटेड बाय एस्ट्राजेनेका देव डन वेल अ प्योर इंडियन कंपनी हैज डन एक्सेप्शनली वेल एंड टूडे your vaccine has efficacy i don't want to point you in the direction of countries which became vaccine producers and the talk is ki 38% unki vaccine <laughs> efficacy hai ya wahan pe uske consequences ho mera mera wo kaam hai duniya bhar se there is undiluted appreciation a little bit of envy also i would say that india was able to manage not only its healthcare system but on so many other respects our foreign direct investment dekhiye jo abhi latest figures aaye hain 84 billion dollars what was the foreign direct investment coming in in 2004 4 billion dollars 20 guna you look at the unicorns you used to produce one unicorn abhi wo kitna pichle saal 43 unicorn i mean i forget the figure i i was speaking in bangalore yesterday and i gave some figure that the expectation this year there'll be 50 you know i mean i hope people know what a unicorn is I mean, somebody asked me a question, which I uh, was slightly taken aback, and I said, "Look, this shows that innovation and entrepreneurial skills and talent are at a premium. And you don't become a unicorn because you and I like each other, or you know, we're interested. I mean, there is a global uh, financial dimension <laughs> where, where the support comes. And look here, look here, United States, the lead economy in the world, 20 trillion dollar, 18, 20, jitna bhi hoga." आप देखिए वहां स्थिति क्या है हाईएस्ट लेवल्स ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इन 50 इयर्स यूके जिनका हमारा 190 साल का संबंध रहा है जिनके साथ स्टीप वॉज डिक्लाइन इन लिविंग स्टैंडर्ड सिंस द सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर एन अदर इकोनॉमी सेकंड लार्जेस्ट इन वर्ल्ड हाई इन्फ्लेशन वेरी हाई इन्फ्लेशन सेकंड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी इन द वर्ल्ड नाम नहीं लेता हूं बारह ट्रिलियन डॉलर की सिटीज इन टोटल क्लोज डाउन तो ऐसा है कि इसमें मुझे या आपको नेरेटिव नहीं बनाना है the very fact that various sectors amuje to jitne sectors ka ke sath jankari hai the civil aviation is back hamare is mahamari ke pehre 4 lakh 20 hazar passenger hote the din mein you are back to that level main aapko foreign direct investment ki baat already kar di hai main kai aur mein oil and energy i can tell you look at what we have done in the last few months in terms of uh, यू नो क्लीन एनर्जी बायोफ्यूल्स ती दो हजार तीस का टारगेट था हमारा बीस परसेंट ब्लेंडिंग का उसको हम दो हजार पच्चीस तक ले आए हम सोच भी नहीं सकते थे कि दस परसेंट ब्लेंडिंग होगी पिछले तीन महीने में एवरी डे वी वर डूइंग टेन परसेंट दैट्स वाई दिस एवरेज केम अप टू फॉर द ईयर यू नो केम अप टू नाइन पॉइंट एट टेन डोट रियलाइज दैट इट्स नॉट जस्ट रशियन ऑयल दैट इज बींग इट इज एथेनॉल नॉट रशियन ऑयल भी देखिए आप पोलिटिकल आप कुछ भी कह सकते हैं आप मुझे एक बात बताइए कहीं भी हो आप तेल इज नॉट ए पर्सन जिसके पे छाप लगा होता है पता कहीं तेल निकलता है कहीं से प्लेस एक्स देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ सम ऑफ हाई सल्फर कॉन्टेंट सम ढूंढ देर पीपल बाय शिप गोस फ्रॉम हेयर टू देयर बाई आई कैन आई टेल यू पिछले साल हमने जो फाइनेंशियल ईयर है हमारा टोटल इंपोर्ट्स वो जीरो पॉइंट टू परसेंट ऑफ आर टोटल इंपोर्ट्स उसका कारण है उसकी जियोग्राफिकल कारण है कि आपको अगर आपके देश के नेबरहुड में तेल मिलेगा तो वहां से खरीदोगे पर अगर आपको खरीदना पड़ेगा तो लोग खरीदेंगे देखिए इसमें कोई इसमें कोई हेजिटेशन नहीं है सो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज बायोफ्यूज एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड प्रोडक्शन ईएनपी वी आर रेजिंग इट फ्रॉम कितने हमारे सेडिमेंट्री बेसिन है छब्बीस है सात आठ थे मैं पूरे सब में ले जा रहे हैं माई इफ आई हैव माई वे देल बी अर वेल इन एवरी बैक यार्ड इंक्लूडिंग योर्स एंड माई It's a flurry of exclusives from Davos. Uh, Puneet Ranjan, global CEO of Deloitte, is bullish on India in an exclusive conversation with Business Today TV. Ranjan says this is India's century. The company also plans to add another 75,000 individuals to its existing pool of professionals in India. Listen in. We've seen a lot of transformation in the last 10 years. We've seen financial stress as elsewhere in the globe, particularly in the Indian context. How are Indian companies changing with the 
the shifts and transformations that are being driven by technology. The big debate in India is the big companies, organized companies growing at, uh, while the smaller informal sector is suffering because they are not competitive in it. Well, if you walk around the promenade in Davos, the thing that struck me uh, was the number of Indian companies that have pop-up uh, out, uh, stores yes. along the promenade. I don't think I, in the seven years that I've been coming, I haven't seen this level of Indian uh, representation here at Davos. That's, that's a key point to hear from the Deloitte Global CEO. Go ahead. Please. The, other, the other thing is the number of states. Uh, you've got Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Telana, Tel Tel Telangana. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and of course, India House. I, yeah. uh, yesterday I was walking down the promenade. I smelled samosas in Davos. India House. Okay. So I think India is really... We miss your home state of Haryana, if I may ask you. Absolutely. Yes. I think Haryana should be here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a message we'll try and get to Mr. Khattar for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Chief Minister Ji, either Rao. Uh, <laughs> what was your question again? <laughs> I was talking about how do companies in India see this shift because you consult with so many of them. How are they uh, uh, changing? Because it's not just the top 50 or 100 Indian companies. The vast amount of Indian employment happens still in the informal sector. That is true, but I think, uh, I mean, look at India, the number of uh, um, uh, startups that you have, uh, it's second, I believe, to the United States, the number of unicorns, I think, is second to the United States. So I believe that uh, the larger companies certainly are becoming uh, global entities, uh, many of the Tata companies, as they, for instance, and, and some of the startups are making uh, some innovative um, uh, uh, investments and innovative products. I'm very bullish on India. You know, I've said this multiple times. I believe this is India's century. I think the, what has happened in the last number of months with Ukraine has certainly made it more difficult, more complex for everybody. But I still believe this is India's century. Okay. Since you talk about uh, Ukraine and its impact on global business, China plus one in the Indian context, certain companies, large companies are looking at India fresh from a manufacturing point of view. And the Indian government pushing manufacturing in India, the Atman Nirbhar, Bharat package. Is that going to work? What is ground level feedback uh, telling you? I think absolutely it is going to work. Uh, India, the number of F the FDI amount that is coming into India is at record levels. There is a, a disconnect between perception, particularly in Asian economies like Japan and, and Singapore. We just did a study. 75% of the 2000 CXOs that we interviewed were looking to invest in India, but there was a mis uh, there was a disconnect between perception as to what has changed in terms of ease of doing business in India, particularly with Asian investors that we need to address. Put it in, uh, in, in slightly um, simpler words. Has it changed for the better? Because for the record, the ease of doing business rankings for the country have gone up consistently in the last few years. Yet you hear a lot of people talking about uh, just the sheer difficulty of working on the ground in India. What has changed? Well, I mean, the digitization of uh, customs, for instance, is one such example. I think it's absolutely changed and, and for the positive. Uh, but as I said, perceptions need to change as well. I think we need to, the Indian community needs to do a better job explaining the changes and there is more work to be done. The uninsured have suffered a devastating impact of the pandemic. Have insurance buying trends changed uh, post that? How is the industry approaching it? Our managing editor Siddharth Zarabi caught up with Tapan uh, Single, MD and CEO Bajaj Alliance and Ramesh Ayer, VC and MD Mahindra Finance at World Economic Forum's 2022 in Davos. Listen in. Your first quick take as the WEF conference has started, what are you really picking up in terms of the business mood uh, within the Indian delegation and perhaps all over? I think, uh, you know, I attended few sessions, met few people. Uh, clearly, from the timing perspective, I would say this is a great time okay. from a weather point of view. All right. uh, from a business perspective, I would think uh, India is at a great position. You know, as you talk to people, everyone is under pressure, seems to be, all over the world. Aren't we under pressure due to inflation? I think, uh, you know, that's part of your business decision. But India is a growing opportunity. So you agree with the RBI's business decision of hiking interest rates? I, I don't have a complaint about it. Okay. I think... Uh, it won't hit your business? Won't I, hit rural consumers? Let's be, let's be fair, right? I mean, they have helped us for a very long time and the time has come where... Uh, the consumers have to pick up something. But what is the consumer looking for? If his business gets going, he's doing well, 
he doesn't mind accommodating this cost. I think the problem, what the way we have to see it is, when the going is tough and you're bringing these kind of tough measures, it becomes a very big burden on the consumer. So RBI or any decision from the government has helped during that difficult time. Now things are changing. Consumers are back to normalcy. People are earning well. I'm sure their revenues will start growing. I'm sure they'll be more than willing to accommodate. That, that's a very interesting take, uh, Ramesh, because uh, one would have imagined that two years of the pandemic, the slowdown and what happened to the commercial vehicle business, for example, or across the entire segment that you have a concentration on. And we were hoping that there would be a pickup infra and other uh, businesses. And suddenly you have now uh, the RBI making it clear that interest rates are going to go back up. Uh, isn't that a risk? I mean, you look at what is the interest increase we are all talking. Let's say a 50 basis point increase has to be accommodated in the system. And look at the asset. Well, that to reach pre-COVID, you have to accommodate 125 basis points. At least to start with, it's now 50 basis point. Okay. So let's look at that if the asset cost is 10 lakh of rupee. What's that 50 basis point on the 10 lakh of rupee? Is that the decision on which somebody is going to decide to buy or not buy? I think if you're already... Does this apply equally, sorry to interrupt you, equally to the SME uh, space as well, which is uh, obviously more exposed to cost pressures? I think my take on this is all of us have to become super efficient. And we have to save this 50 basis point in some other cost. We somehow think which is more publicly discussed as an item that we think hurts us. But there are a lot of internal costs that even the organizations have to focus on. Electric two-wheeler scooters, why are they catching fire? Explain this. This is not a question to you. I mean, it's bothering people. What's happening? See, honestly, I can't answer this on behalf of the OEMs. No, no, I, I, like I said, so, not on behalf yeah, then, but generally. Yeah. So, probably are we little faster to put it in the market for sales before it has been fully tested for its correctness. I, I don't have an answer, but, you know, look at it from a consumer point of view. There are two angles to this. One is, you know, they buy this with their hard-earned money. And uh, whether they should lose an asset like this and then wait. For and an in some cases not happen. get uh, claims because yeah, so claims are being turned down. To be, you know, coming in, not coming in, one has to see. The other side is, of course, the health hazard and related to that, the confidence issue right so once you see this happen more often then people will move away from whether to buy or not to buy kind of a situation my personal opinion on this though is that uh, you know there has to be a lot of communication that has to come out to say why this happened and what actions are being taken for this not to repeat. but Ramesh uh, why only communications let me ask you a direct question uh, in the traditional automotive segment India has one of the toughest uh, systems of quality checks homologation, imported vehicles, I don't even want to get into it. Uh, why uh, isn't there a regulatory architecture for these vehicles? Or am I wrong in uh, even asking this question? Shouldn't the government have thought of this before? I think uh, they would have thought through and I'm sure more regulations may come in as well. But ultimately the fact is that, uh, you know, the safety of people buying is never going to be of any less priority for anybody. As a leading financer, uh, what do you see happening as far as the electric vehicle space is concerned? Again, this is a broader macro question. From a pricing point of view, do you see inflection point coming anytime soon? So very clearly, you know, it will come in. But I still think in the auto industry, when somebody is buying, going to buy a vehicle, some of the first question they are asking is, what is the likely resale price at the end of three years? You know, they are still looking at what is the resale price at the end of three years. And therefore... All the new introductions, electric vehicle, etc. Again, I'll go back to the same thought of communication. It has to be a very collaborative approach from the OEMs, from the distributor and from the financiers together to say that, okay, how will we protect the resale price at the end of three years? Because that's not established yet and it'll take time to establish. Because cost of operation is well established, right? Cost of operating this vehicle is going to be much lower than operating any other fuel vehicle. So having said that, People will ask this end question to say, okay, I'm buying into something. What, what will be the resale price of this vehicle? Or what will be the longevity of this vehicle? Okay, can I use it yeah, for ever with no resale?
Our managing editor also spoke with Amit Bajaj, President North America TCS, and Saptagiri Chapla Bali, Head of Europe at TCS, on how FY23 will look for IT companies and for TCS amid economic slowdown due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. It's said that in the field of technology, when America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. I'm not talking about revenue numbers, but uh, do you see that happening given uh, the economic slowdown, inflation, and the uncertainty that seems to have set in after what's happening with global macro factors? First of all, from TCS perspective, uh, no, not really, because we have a fantastic business model that is a solution to customers' uh, challenges both in the upturn and in the downturn. Uh, so as we call, there's a growth and transformation engine and a cost and optimization engine. So they work across cycles. I think broadly, if I see uh, from a larger perspective, yes, there is concern around rising inflation. Um, there is concern around talent situation. There are some concerns, but customers by and large are committed uh, to the larger technology adoption across industries. So. Amit, a lot of uh, the parents who are listening to this conversation and to uh, all the young people who are building their careers are studying right now, they would, they would pick up that one point about talent and we know the headlines there. But Sapta, uh, the same question really with an additional comment uh, if you can share. Uh, how are things looking from Europe because we have a war that's going on and you see uh, a, a, a different kind of economic fallout, especially with regard to energy within Europe. Does that cloud the outlook or are things, uh, is business going to be as usual? Yeah, like uh, Amit pointed out, uh, all industries are in transition. Uh, and Europe, of course, uh, is also having leading companies who are leading this whole revolution. And the good thing about that is this entire transition is powered by technology and digital technology and most of our customers whether it's an automotive company whether it's an energy company retailer everyone wants to use more and more technology to transform their business models and go into the future and that's why we see a significant uh, potential as well as an opportunity for uh, as well as a responsibility for us to work closely with our customers as they transition into the new industry Secondly, of course, when it comes to Europe, we do have two points that you raised. One is the, the energy security issue, uh, because we are heavily dependent uh, on the energy uh, from Russia, for example. And uh, there is a rapid move to go to alternate mechanisms, but also to go into more sustainable energy sources. And uh, with regard to uh, the situation in Ukraine, of course, it's a huge humanitarian crisis, and TCS uh, has... Uh, was one of the first companies which stepped in and uh, supported the humanitarian uh, efforts of agents in humanitarian agencies as well as uh, some of our uh, people who had families there and so on. So I do see that there is no stopping the digital transformation or the digital transformation enabling industries. That's how we leave it on the show today. Thanks so much for watching.